Welcome to the Barbarian Hour podcast, where we conquer the impossible. The Barbarian Hour podcast is presented by Barbarian Apparel. Here is Jared Opfer and Zeb Miller. Are you ready? Hello, wrestlers and coaches. I'm Teague Moore. I spent 20 years coaching at the Division I level in the NCAA, 15 of those years as a head coach. During that time, I helped a lot of wrestlers and parents navigate the recruiting process. I've now opened my own consulting business to do just that, to help you navigate the recruiting process. There's a lot of unanswered questions. How do scholarships work? What program would be right for my son? Or better yet, what coach would be right for my wrestler? I can help answer these and many other questions. Feel free to email me or call me at the information listed below, and we can set up your first consultation today. I look forward to working with you and helping you make the right choice. Barbarian Hour. Tonight, we have Cleveland State head coach Josh Moore. Coach Moore is a multiple-time All-American for the Nittany Lions of Penn State. Second and third, right? Yep, second and third. Okay, and then you and, were you and your brother third together? No, he uh, the year I took third, he took fourth. He took fourth. So. Yeah, he took fourth. He, uh, I think he lost to the same kid twice. The uh, man, kid from Army, uh, Phil Simpson. 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 Yeah, Simpson. Yeah, he was yeah. a beast. He was pretty. Yeah. Wow. You guys one year were one two in the country in pins. You and Scott Moore. Who first off? Who's older? You or Scott? Oh, he is. Yeah, How he, much? he's got me by a whole ten minutes. You got ten minutes, huh? <laughs> Ten minutes, huh? It what's crazy is you guys wrestled this really wild style that was similar when you guys were one two in the country in pins, weren't you? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think my senior year, I had twenty something, but he had like thirty or thirty one. Um, but a lot I, of pins, we were, dude. We were one and two. Yeah, I think it, I think it was pretty close. Has anybody been in your guys's league as far as pins? Is there anybody who's had 30 plus pins since you got like Askren or anyone like that? Did they have pins like you did? I think so. Didn't they? I don't know. Zeb, oh, you no. know, third dude, 30. I think <laughs> your brother had 34 pins yeah. one year. Yeah. I think he, uh, in, in the recent, like the last 15 or 20 years, I think he still probably has a lead. I think there maybe was a D two or D three kid that had like 30, but yeah, he, um, I think, he, I think he holds some type of record there, especially at UVA. I mean, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he had 30. He had like 34 or 30, some crazy inordinate amount of pins at UVA in his grad year. And that was the year. Did he lose to uh, Cliff Moore in the semis? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was that year. Yeah. You made the finals that year too, right? Yeah, I was in the finals. He took and I had wrestled Cliff Moore the year before in the quarterfinals, so that was kind of funny. Um, How did it go with Cliff and you? Well, he beat me. Uh, yeah, it was like he beat me by like a point or two. Is you know, it's kind of I gave up like maybe a locked hands and a figure four in the body, and um, I think he ended up he won that one. But then I think he dropped down to sixth, maybe fifth or sixth. So who did you beat in the blood run then? Uh, that year was. Uh, 2003 was Mansueto from Cleveland State. You beat Mansueto. The, <laughs> yeah. the you beat. You yeah. beat. Yeah, that's the funny Rocco, part. Rocco or? Uh, it was Phil. Phil. Yep. No way. Yeah. How bad you beat him? Did you put it on him? Uh, I think I pinned him. He it, he was, I mean, he was tough. He was kind of, we were hand fighting and getting a little chippy. And then, um, like, I got him in some type of bear hug and just. Crunched him. Yeah, it was like first period, but yeah, it was. Um, you know, they really needed that all American too. They That's really the, did. the part. Like, I things could have really been much better for them if they would have got that little jolt back in 2003. But it is what it is, you know. I mean, they're um, they're awesome dudes. I mean, a text with those guys, and it's funny. Just um, like I'll I'll get them both together and and text them, and they kind of rip on each other, and it just you know, it just reminds me of 
the relationship that me and my brother have and we just like, <laughs> you know, just anything goes, we rip on each other, make fun of each other. But um, it's cool that they're, you know, they're, they're just good dudes, man. They're, uh, I think they're both, they're both teachers. They're both teachers. I believe so in Tennessee, right? Yeah. Here's yeah. the irony of that for me. There's a, like a lot of irony, actually, you beating Phil and Suedo. They're twins, obviously. Rocco and Phil are twins. And then, you know, Josh and Scott Moore are twins, <laughs> right? You're the head coach at Cleveland State now. Uh, I mean, you inadvertently derailed your own program that you'd take over in thir- 14 years from then, right? 15 years from then. Um, obviously you have no crystal ball, but do you get my iron? There's just a lot of irony there. Yeah. 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 It's funny how things work out like that, but, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's neat to have in, um, who else was, somebody else was talking about that. I think it was, I think it was maybe mustard on what some podcast, but he was just talking about, you know, um, respecting the guys that he competed with, you know, and mustard's, you know, that's been 20, 20 something plus years that he's, you know, back in his college days, but yeah, same thing. It's just, it's funny how you kind of things come full circle and uh, the guys you competed against, you kind of um, now, you know, I mean, people are still friends, but back then you saw your competitors as kind of enemies and the way my mindset and my brother's mindset was kind of like, we were, we, I mean, we were nice guys off the mat, but on the mat, we were, you know, we like to get after it and be physical and, um, you know, we said we weren't trying to be nice to anybody. So I, I don't know how many friends, like of guys that we wrestled with, they would, they would even want to be our friends back then. But, but now, you know, now coaching and some, a lot of years past, you kind of see those guys as different, you know, in a different light. And, um, it's cool that you can kind of be friends with guys you competed against way back in the day. Listen, when you're, when you're, crushing them with forearms and headbutts and full body scissors and breaking ribs and you're a bone crunching killer. I don't want to be your friend either. Yeah. That's what I'm I don't saying. want to be your friend either. When you're, when you're mauling me and committing fe- felonies against me, I just want you to know that. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah, it's hard I, to make friends that way. Isn't it? it sure. Is. <laughs> it, it sure is. Right. Cause the style was just so physical. <laughs> big moves leg cradles one of the biggest nca upsets in the past 20 years you're one of the biggest nca upsets in the last 20 years semifinals was it johnny Hendry or johnny uh thompson yeah it was actually quarterfinals it was yeah. at the, still think, still still one of yeah. the biggest nca upsets in the last 20 years it's, and i'm not I'm not over my not out over my skis on this one it was a huge upset you body you leg cradle them once or twice didn't you yeah, well, twice, but the, I only got points for the one. But, yeah, he would shoot that double leg, and I would kind of sit off to the side and um, kind of trap his head and then sit the corner and then pinch my legs together. But, yeah, the first the first time or the second time, one of the two, the official uh, – Didn't know what he was seeing. He didn't day. know what was before his eyes. Yep, yep. I think it was Randy uh, Randy Garris maybe. I don't know, something. But, uh, yeah, he, so, he'd never and, seen that before. Yeah, they should have though. I mean, people. I mean, exactly. I don't. I don't. I don't think a lot of people have seen it. But you know, when the kid's on their back, and you know, you the other guys hold them there. What else do you want? It's just wild to me that you guys, you and Scott, were prolif- prolific pinners like a Wade Shallis. You were prolific pinners like like the Askren brothers. Dude, that's amazing. That's an unbelievable ac- accomplishment. Here's the craziest thing about it. I remember they brought you in. At Kent State in like 06, maybe? Was that first year? 05, 06? Uh, four, yeah. Was it four or five? Oh, four, oh, five? Yeah, 2004 is my – well, I graduated from Penn State in 2004. Then I went right out there. Well, a couple months after I graduated. Well, I remember they got you because you replaced Cummins. Uh, or in Sveda, I believe. Was that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, we hired – we hired uh, Ryan Cummins, who I wrestled with at Penn State, to come work out with our big boys. Okay. Yep. I like that. Ryan he Cummins. Was... Nice guy. Oh, dude, he's the, yeah. They're the nicest. Real nicest nice guys. guys. Yeah. Real nice yeah. guys. Mm-hmm. Um. So okay, so you come in as this like young killer, right? And it wasn't the same as like I think you're the type of guy that would be in the RTC today. The way you you know your career ended, 
you lose in the NCAA finals to a guy who you beat the year before. Did you, did you Tech fall him in the third, fourth place match? No, nah, that was just a major. 14-1 14 14 to one or something, right? Oh. Right? So, like, now guys like that are going to RTCs and they're having success. And the style you had was very much so a freestyle style as well. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think – I think it could have adapted pretty well, you know. I mean, I wrestled. I wrestled a couple of years after um, college international and did pretty well. But you know, it was a matter of, you know, I was just working out with college guys, you know, just rolling around with them, and then I'd go to these tournaments and wrestle, you know, uh, great awesome kids, you know, some of the best, some of the best guys in the country, and the the part that separated me from them was they were training with you know some of the some of the best and I was training with college kids you know but I was I was just having fun with it you know I thought eh, might as well stay in shape and go wrestle and see what's going on but yeah at a certain point after I think two or three years you know placing in top six at like the U.S. Open or World Team Trials I just kind of you know knew that if I wasn't going to be committed full time to training and really put everything I had into it um, there, there just wasn't really no reason to continue, you know, be, being good. I mean, being, you know, top eight in the, in the country, but, um, uh, those guys that are making world teams and Olympic teams are their full-time training. I mean, that's, that's their job to them. And at that point I was coaching and having fun with it. Um, had some really good lightweights come through the program and just working out with those guys. And, um, so I decided just to stick, you know, full-time coaching and, kind of just stop competing there. So you developed um, some really good lightweights. Um, a Pennsylvania guy, Nick Badleon, uh, Danny Mitchiff, Drew Lashaway. You had really good lower weights, man. You had guys that could just – they could roll. You were a big part of developing those guys at Kent State. And now, you know, you guys have had good guys, good 25s, 33s, 41s in the years you've been at Cleveland State. And – um what do you think the secret is for developing guys like that when you're young, man, how hard did you have to try to not mangle people? <laughs> you, you baby Hueyed people and you just like, didn't know your own strength. It was crazy. And like, you could hurt them, right? You could hurt guys. Yeah. That, I, that's one thing I kind of pride myself on. I don't think I really ever hurt anybody in the practice room, you know? Um, Cause you, I mean, you get some young coaches that get in the room and they're just like, you know, they're, they're just like you said, they're just getting after it. They're just going full go and they don't realize, Hey, you're supposed to be coaching these kids. You're supposed to be developing these kids and teaching these kids. You're not just there to beat the crap out of them. So I guess that's, that's one thing. Um, I think I did a pretty good job at is just give them, give them enough to challenge them and make them better, but not beat them up and not hurt their pride and hurt their confidence. Uh, but just give them just enough and then know when to let up. Um, no one to let them be successful and, and let them get the gains, you know, as a coach, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to beat anybody in the room, but just push them and give them that good feel. And I think that's where you see a lot of younger coaches have that success is when they're able to get in the, in the room. And I mean, you, there's no better way to, I guess, be a coach than wrestling with guys and being able to feel the stuff they're doing. Um, and that was, that was new to me. I mean, just graduating, competing, and then getting into coaching, like, I, you know, I didn't really know exactly. I mean, I, obviously I knew what coaching was, but um, definitely was a learning experience for me to figure out the best way to, to, you know, to benefit these guys and to be the best coach I could be. And uh, yeah, we had, we had some great guys, which, so it kind of made my job easy when you, when you have kids that show up want to do extra workouts. Um, they ha have the right mindset and they're just, they're just good kids. So it kind of, um, you know, kind of all worked out. Uh, but you know, my first three, four five years having all those good kids to work with was a blessing. And then, you know, like guys like Mike De Palma transferred in when you were a coach, right? Ian was your guy, right? And Ian was a similar style to you. Maybe not on the mat, but the similar like explosive, gunslinger style right oh yeah i mean yeah he was he was probably way more explosive than me i don't think i was explosive i think i was just 
dangerous and new. Mean, mean, yeah, very was, mean. Uh, yeah, but he was, yeah, he had some, he had some amazing stuff, and I think that's maybe our how we were similar. You know, we both had things that you couldn't really always teach. You know, it was just a natural feel and a natural ability to you know, know the positions you're good at and get in there and, and execute those positions. I mean, you just, you know, like he, how you could put the crunch on people and pin them. He wasn't like that pinner, right? He wasn't like that. He was just like a takedown Houdini, whereas you could like, man, you would get some of the stuff you would get on people when you would leg cradle them, <laughs> when you would figure for their body. Because you guys were good. You were real good at hiding like your figure four. And you're real good at and keeping that, keeping it just to scissors, right? Yeah. You're real good. You ran, you walked that line a lot, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, we were, I mean, I think a lot of times we rode legs a lot. So when you're just kind of throwing legs in from all angles and guys are catching it and they're, you know, putting them places, it's hard. Like, I mean, I guess it was just kind of situations that you ended up in. Um, but ideally, yeah, we're trying to get legs in and, flatten the guy out and power half him you know that was that was one of our big moves is just a straight power half yeah where you think um you know most people think you know half nelson's you know a move that oh you, you know you do that and when you're second grade and third grade and fifth grade but nobody thinks of uh you know power half to be a, a college move and then power half to leg scissors you know I, we were told going into college because we used to leg scissor people all the time in high school and kind of told by a couple of coaches like yeah that's probably not going to work like in college you know? it worked, not, it worked for the more like yeah did you guys um, were killers with it i mean killers with it like felonious killers and you were doing it to really good guys that was what was wild about it and here's just the, the wildest thing like about the full circle thing right i know still today you might not be able to do the things you did on your feet went in 2004, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 as a, as a coach, right? I know when you still get on top of people, you can absolutely destroy their week. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's, you know, he never lose, never lose that. And that, and that's the uh, part that um, definitely as a coach that I want to, we, we want to do more of is just that top wrestling, you know, and that's, when you talk about, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about, you know, just being from Pennsylvania and getting a lot more mat time and seeing how that translates into the college, <clears throat> college wrestling. Um, but yeah, that's, that's fun. I mean, for, to me, wrestling's, you know, when you're in contact with somebody and you're rolling around and you're scrambling and you're, you know, you're doing stuff like that. It's not so much like the bobbing and weaving from the outside and dancing, you know, wrestling's physical and it's when, you know, when you're in contact with somebody and there's nothing better than being able to ride somebody and turn somebody. And especially now, you know, with the, uh, well, it's been a couple of years, but how back points have changed to now it's four point. Yeah. Near it's, that's uh, huge, man. If that would have been around when you and your brother, I don't know if anyone could have beat you. Four, Cause that's, that's insurmountable sometimes. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, that's like, that's crazy. And then you knew match management, you were wily, right? You're so good on the mat. It's like a four point near fall changes the game for guys like you. Yeah, I can't believe they changed it. You know, tell people that all the time. It's like, how did, I mean, I know it's, you know, to open up matches and to score points. And, but man, um, yeah, you see, it's, I mean, it's exciting. I mean, I think it's, it's important. I know now every time we meet with an official, it's, um, you know, they're really, hitting on make sure we're you know make sure you're 45 degrees to get your back points so i think they they like giving out the back points but they want to make sure people are know, in criteria you're, you're in criteria you know yeah. we can't just but you know matches get a lot of matches get done quicker so it makes maybe some duels go by quicker and um but yeah it is it is uh it is pretty neat i mean i don't think you know i don't think pinnings changed a lot i guess i was trying to think back maybe if it used to be like a two second pin changed to a one second pin, but it's all, it's all. It's what always been, when That's someone's all. buried, usually they're buried. <laughs> yeah, right. They're buried. They're buried. Yeah, you know what? You brought it up and I'm glad you did. You know, we only got 40 minutes left here, but why is the, there, the, there's such this style divide 
between Pennsylvania and Ohio. You're almost as many years in Ohio as you were in Pennsylvania, right? You're 18 years in Ohio, right? Are you 40 yet? You guys 40 yet? You and Scott 40? Yeah, 40. 40, okay. So you've been 18 years in Ohio roughly, right? Yeah, yep. What is it? What is the deal? Why is it? Why is the style so different? And I know the coaches have evolved even since you've been here. The high school coaches have, even the college coaches have. Why is there such a style divide? Why is Pennsylvania so dominant on the mat? You and your brother being from Franklin, Pennsylvania, Northwest Pennsylvania, right? Allegheny yeah, National sure. Forest, basically, right? Uh, Allegheny River. Allegheny uh, River runs through it, doesn't it? Might be a national forest up there. I don't know. Yeah. No, no I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I take my kids oh, there. Yeah, I did. I know all of it. Yeah. It's a, it's a cool little town, you know, some, some neat things going on down there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just think, just think there's back then there's a bunch of just good clubs and good coaches and, um, maybe they were just, maybe PA just understood that you had to be good on the mat and more people taught it, you know, I don't know. That's the big <laughs> one I get. That's the big one I get from a lot of PA guys. Yeah. Tig Moore said it. Tig Moore was like, it's because you had all these small teacher colleges exactly. and these guys wrestling D one at a high level. And then they're all going back. They're getting teaching degrees. And then that's what they're going back and teaching. Yep. 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 Yeah. I, I mean, a couple at, people tell me that. Yeah. Well, you, I mean, you look at like Clarion and Lockhaven. I mean, you probably had, you know, 50, 60 teachers come out of those schools, you know, over, over, uh, you know, probably three or four years. I mean, I think that's basically what everybody was. They were teacher then. schools. That was Tig's whole point. Is yeah. they're teacher yeah. schools. Yeah, yeah, and that's how they that's how they remain strong, you know, because they they have all, all those alumni out there that are teaching at you know all across PA, and those are the connections and the relationships they use to recruit. Um, and also, you know, same thing with the camps. You know, I mean, all those all those uh, old coaches want to go back to their stomping grounds at you know Lock Cave and Clarion, Bloomsburg you know, Penn State, same way. I mean, I don't, there's some teachers that come out of Penn State, but yeah, kind of, I think it all, it all kind of builds that network um, and, and keeps those small schools relevant and keeps, um, you know, the, the support, you know, where it needs to be and it keeps the fans, you know, there. And um, it's kind of a cool, cool thing if you really think about how that, how that developed and how that still, you know, works out for those small schools. It's wild to me to think about it, you know, because out of the gate, you didn't go to Penn State, did you? No, I went to Edinburgh. You went to Edinburgh. Edinburgh, yep. Walk <laughs> me through that a little bit. Walk me through kind of why Edinburgh out of the gate. I understand it's close. Proximity was it's very cro close, right? To, to, to Franklin, PA, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's about 50 minutes. 50 minutes. So, so not – not uh not bad right like uh, that's that's close right i mean that's close for a college kid to stay within an hour yeah. and yeah. you're there they had a great program they're rocking and rolling right it was right in the the tim the beginning of the tim flynn era why why there and, and then why the transfer uh i mean i chose there because it was close to home it was one of my best or good friends from high school uh cory ace went there he was a state champ <laughs> I think at the time I was kind of, I was a pretty, I think I was a pretty quiet kid. Um, didn't really have an interest in going to a big school. You know, I guess Franklin was a, a smaller, smaller town. And um, I don't know. I just didn't, I didn't really feel like going to a bigger school would, was a good fit for me. So only probably two visits. I went, I went on a visit to Pitt, to Penn state. Um, but, you know, at the time it was kind of – nobody was, like, really recruiting us with the intent of offering, like, a good athletic scholarship, you know. And, well, and you I guess – You weren't state champs. Neither one of the Moore brothers was a state champ. Yeah, right? no, no, we weren't state champs, no. No. no what well, I mean, we were state yeah. place winners, a couple times state place winners, and Fo Fargo All-American. So, you know, but I guess at the time – I know Penn State was recruiting some lightweights that were a couple of times state champs. Um, Edinburgh, they had some good guys like Jason Gabrielson, Chad Kairos. They had 
Cor- my yeah, my buddy Corey Ace was there. So Corey Ace um, was an All American in Edinburgh, right? Yeah. Yep. And he's a Franklin uh, guy. 2000, 2002. Yeah, he he dropped. He's actually at forty one. Crazy. He was at one thirty five in high school, and then he dropped to one thirty three his junior year. Um, that would have been my sophomore year. And he ended up – I wrestled him that year. That was the cool part. I, so, I went to Edinburgh, then I transferred to Penn State, and then we went back to wrestle Edinburgh, and I wrestled him in the dual meet. How did it go? You know, in high school, in high school he, he was 135, and we were 119, 125. So, he was, he was a man. We were just – we haven't – probably didn't hit purity till we were, you know, first or second year of college. So, he used to – he used to just, you know, beat us. I mean – wasn't even close, but that's well, how you got yeah, good, we, though. That's how you got good. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah we had each other, and then we had, you know, someone like him that we kind of looked up to. To be honest, I mean, he was always, you know, one year ahead of us and had accomplished more than us. And um, although he was he was a bigger football player, we wrestled we wrestled a lot of freestyle. So I think that's kind of where we took that next step. When he was playing football, we were wrestling all summer. <laughs> How okay, so listen, how did it end up with you and him in the match? Oh, I ended up beating him. Yeah, I ended up beating him. I I don't know the score. I think it was like six three, maybe. Um yeah, it was it was a good match. It was a good match. Um but it was kind of neat. I mean, I kinda I, honestly I kind of felt bad in a way. <laughs> you know, like why? Tell me why you felt bad. I, I want to know why. I don't know. I don't know. I guess I just felt like, oh, I mean, I I wanted to win, and obviously I did, but I, I just kind of felt bad beating him. I mean, there was – it was – so because it was so close to Franklin, there was probably I – I don't even know. Let's just say 40 or 50, like, coaches, wrestlers, just fans from, from our hometown. They are like, oh, crap, let's go up and watch this match, you know. And was um, he already an All-American at that point? No, he was not. He he was at 141 the year before, and he decided, hey, I'm going to cut down to try to get on the podium. And um, it worked for him. I mean, he he uh, that's the year he placed. The Did year you I guys hit him. at the NCAA tournament? No. So that's – I that was my sophomore year. I ended up tearing my ACL in uh, February against Michigan, against Foley Dowd. Um, I was ranked like ninth in the country. It was like 31, 31 and three, maybe at that point. And um, so after I tore my ACL, I tried to try to come back and go to a couple of practices. And I remember running, like trying to run some sprints and I pushed off the wall. My knee just kind of buckled. And at that, that day I said, yeah, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I'm, not, I'm not trying to wrestle through this. So I, I had surgery over spring break, um, went to nationals. It was, up in uh up in new york i believe albany i think that was the year my brother was wrestling so i actually went up to nationals and i had to get a, my doctor let me go but i had to get a wheelchair to uh to go because they didn't want me standing on my knee the whole time but it was cool he ended up i think Corey ended up placing eighth he maybe i think he had the injury default out for some reason but um it was good to see him get on the podium but sucked for me because i know you know, I would have placed that year. I mean, in my mind, I was, I was wrestling really well that year and kind of moved up from 25 from the year before. So just kind of growing into the weight class, feeling pretty good. Um, but you know, things didn't work out. When Scott, year. how did Scott do that year? He didn't, he didn't do that well. I don't think I remember, I think he wrestled was it Pat Nesky maybe from West Virginia um, he might, he might've went and two or one and two that year, but that's part of that was because he bumped up when I bumped up to 33, he was at 33 and then he had to bump up to 41. So he was probably weighing like 145, you know, cutting to 33 and then bumped up to 41 because I was bumping up. So he probably, I mean, he definitely could have rustled me off at that year, but we were just kind of, I mean, he was, he was cool with it and it, he kind of grew into the, grew into the weight class and, you know, it's nice going through a college season and not really cutting much weight. It's like the biggest thing. My, my brother, Ferd, 
who just drove me to a fit because he kept calling me and interrupting my feed while I was watching App State versus Gardner Webb. He's like, you never talk about the weigh-ins and why guys are so good in <laughs> MMA. I'm like, I talk about it all the time, Ferd. And you know Ferd, obviously, he recruited his son and coached his son. So, you know Ferd, he's a bit maddening. And he's a real yeah. piece of work. So, anyhow, he's like, you never talk about it. I'm like, dude, I talk about it all the time. That's the thing that sets wrestlers apart. Think about it. You were Think about the weight you were pulling at 25. And then if they would have asked you to go fight, it would have been like, it would have been like a, a, you'd have stepped down. You'd have stepped down in training. You'd have stepped down in diet. You'd have stepped down in everything because you'd have had to make one way in every six months if you're fighting. Think about that. Oh, yeah. And yeah. You guys would have been killers as fighters. I can just tell you that much. If you would have got some Brazilian jiu-jitsu with already, what you already were doing, you would have just been, you'd have been crushing people's ribs. You'd have been breaking arms, crushing ribs, snapping necks, 100%. And my yeah. thing with you guys is you can take a hit. You can take a punch. You can take trauma. Because when you used to feed the forearms you used to feed to the, <laughs> to the trap, uh, oh, my God, dude. The headbutts and the forearms, was Scott as bad with them? Oh, uh, I think so. He was more, I mean, you know, don't, don't make it sound too bad. Zeb. I mean, we were, Are just, you, people can go watch it. You're committing. You know, we were what we were told to do out there. Zeb. Okay. You know, we were, we were just, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Up, Am I even up. exaggerating slightly with the forearms? You would tie up. Oh my God. What's oh, the yeah. Emmy award winning film about you? There's a short film that like won an Emmy, didn't it? Yeah. Well, it, yeah. One of our, um, Arturo Cabanas made it. It was actually pretty cool. I think, it was after my freshman year and I thought he was just kind of joking around, but yeah, he put it together. I think it was, uh, it won some type of short film award on Showtime. Yeah. And it's like uh, pure violence. You just committing felonies against people. Yeah. yeah. Back when you're allowed <laughs> to be. No, have your kids have, have your sons, you got three sons, you've got all these wrestlers. Do they know how much of a savage you were? think so at times yeah oh my you get, god dude you'll find, i remember get, watching get, it yeah <laughs> well i still get people to come up to me and tell me they watched they watched that film but uh it, it was a good film i mean like you know when you're 19 years old or 20 years old you think it's kind of cool that somebody's making a film of you um and you, and you like the attention but then you know years years later it's kind of kind of goofy but kind of goofy dude it's pure violence it's yeah. like pure violence yeah. i'm not even exaggerating when i watch it i can't believe nobody from mma because i know they had like a, a a gym in state college and now they got another mma gym in state college okay. can't believe none of those guys were ever like dude you gotta fight because i think uh was it biff walzer he fought and then all these penn state guys like started fighting obviously yeah. phil davis and I, I can't believe they never pulled either one of you guys, you or Scott, into the MMA. Or even had you just do a grappling match. Cause you could, yeah. And now, Josh, think about it now. You could go do, like, no gi and gi stuff. And with what? And you could figure it out. Because I talked to Andy Rovat, and he's like, oh, yeah. I got, I got a blue belt or a white belt. And he's like, I can roll with most black belts because, obviously, the wrestling transitions over to it, right? And the thing about that is I think you got to figure out how to not get choked out. Got to figure out how to get not arm triangle. There's a lot of stuff to it that guys are slick. They lie in weight and it, it's, you know, you're different, man. You're clubbing, moving forward, pulling on them, beating them up, moving them. Right. It's so much fast. It's a different pace compared to what they're used to, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, I think, I think we'd have been successful. I, I remember watching that stuff growing up and it was, it was a little wild, but then, uh, I feel like we kind of missed it by maybe like three or four years. I think it's really started getting much bigger in like 2007, eight, nine. But, um, but yeah, thinking about like moving to where I live now and knowing like all the gyms around here and especially strong style with, you know, you know, Stipe and, um, you know, Ben Williford who wrestled at Cleveland state, uh jt miller who wrestled at cleveland state bunch of i mean we jt's, JT's uh, cleveland cop isn't he yeah yeah and, and hey uh, steep is a uh valley view fireman isn't he? yeah 
But how about that? Toughest guy in the world, the Cleveland State guy. Well, I mean, you know, he he held the title the longest. He held the heavyweight title the longest. He had the most defenses in UFC history. Did you know he put it on me? Did you know he beat me up? <laughs> you know he beat me up in a duel at camp. No, no, but, hey, listen, the duel I'm trying going to try and cover Thursday. Yeah. I'm gonna be there Thursday for your for your duel with Kent State. That's the plan. Well, I was supposed to be there yeah. Sunday. I remember I was like, hey, don't get mad at me oh, if I'm yeah. at Kent State in Buffalo tomorrow. And I didn't even go was, because okay. the weather was horrendous. Yeah. Did Navy yeah, get stuck? Bit. Did Navy get stuck in Cleveland? No, they they um said that they had a first time bus driver and because oh, I was talking to Cole out about maybe wrestling some extra matches and he's like, Yeah, we gotta get him in real quick because this chick, she's um she's not real comfortable with driving in the snow and so we got to get we got to get on the bus and get out of here. And I was like, all right, well, and it and it was pretty bad. I I got up there maybe I don't know a few hours before weighing, maybe like eleven, and it took me almost twice as long to get there than it normally would. What's but, the drive from Stowe to CSU? Thirty? Yeah, it's about thirty-five, thirty-seven. Yeah, you got it down. It's right up eight, Route Eight to. Uh... Eight to four eighty to seventy seven, right? Yeah, four eighty to yeah, two seventy one to four eighty, or you can take eighty over and up, or go the back way through the like the uh, Cuyahoga Valley National Park. Get to oh, that's gonna crowd. take a while though. Hit McDonald's up, get a sweet tea, and there you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Maybe go and throw some forearms, throw some body scissors on some people, crunch some crunch some bones. You know, not you know, is yeah. all of your facilities. In what is the facility called? Woodling Gym is Woodling Gym. There's an auditorium. There's your uh, your rec center, and then there's Woodling Gym, and then the wrestling room is down in the bowels of it, right? Yeah. What is that whole facility actually called? It's called the Physical Education Building. Okay. Um, and yeah, Physical Education Building. There's exercise science stuff in there. So, but actually, I think Cleveland State had physical education as far as a major, but I think it's slowly getting transitioned out a um, lot of schools yeah. are not big on physical education now and they're doing a lot of that as like a flex credit and they're allowed to like turn in a sheet and they're letting them count extracurricular some school it's a, yeah it's like pe is not what pe used to be what's your degree actually from penn state josh uh, my degree is in uh, crime law and justice and then i got a minor in business law and then uh, when I went to Kent, I got a master's in sport management. You were going to be a cop. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, that was kind of what my brother and I were both thinking. I think we probably took the state police test like two or three times when, when we were in college. Um, always did well on it. And the, the last time I took it was at um, some point before I graduated. And I did well. And I was supposed to go to Pittsburgh to take the next – part of the oral exam and then that's where that's when the Kent thing kind of opened up and I was like well do I want to continue to be in coaching and wrestling and competing or do I want to like keep trying to you know become a state cop so I decided you know I want to stay in wrestling at that point um so and it, and it you know 16 18 years later it worked out how many years total in Kent 13 or 14 uh, 11. 11? It was only 11? And how many total at CSU now as assistant and now head? Going into the middle of the seventh, seven years. So three, three as assistant, four as the head? Yeah, three and about three and three, three okay. and a half, three and a half, something like gotcha. that. Gotcha. Okay. So, you know, the whole situation where you guys, you dropped and you brought back, right? Remember that whole situation was crazy. You were assistant coach then, correct? No, I was I was at Kent, um, and I remember them like reading about it, and then recruiting uh, Evan Cheek. He he actually came down for a visit after they dropped in like early April, and uh, I remember going to going to eat with him, and I think his mom was there, and then um, I think I was kind of the one that was showing him around and hanging out with him, and. Um, a couple maybe a week later or something they yeah Cleveland State brought back their program and Evan 
said, yeah, I'm going to stick with Cleveland State. And, I, and at the time, I was like, man, you have a chance to come wrestle at Kent State, and we've had All-Americans in the lightweights. Like, what are you <laughs> what are you, what are you thinking? What are you doing, you know? man? Yeah, what are you like, dude, come on down. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I, I think it was because they are offering like a full ride. <laughs> dude, and he I was, was an explosive freak mutant. Yeah. Well, Remember he, was, he won the EWL and was, I believe, the OW, wasn't he? Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. It well, was coming crazy. Out of high school, he was he was physical as well. He was like you know a, kind of a physical specimen, very aggressive. I remember texting Jared Opfer about him, like, hey, what's you know how's this Evan Cheek and He's like, hey, he's he's a mean, tough kid, and obviously, I mean that that style and that attitude works in college, and it certainly worked for him. He, you know, was a couple time national qualifier and. Um, was named an All-American, didn't, you know, Nationals were, were canceled his senior year when he was having a really good year, um, ranked in the top 15, and it was canceled. But, um, yeah, cool thing is he we graduated from Cleveland State, but he's now back helping us out as, a, like, a volunteer coach. Been getting in the room with some of our guys and mostly, like, Marcus Robinson and Russell with Daniel Patton today. But, um, but yeah, it's kind of – you know, seeing him kind of get in the room and do what I did when I started, you know, as a young assistant coach, just working out with guys and, you know, giving them good feels and pushing them. And, um, you know, I think kids, kids appreciate it because they know how good he was and what he accomplished. So, you know, kids respect that and they listen to him. He does a little with St. Ed's, I think too, right? No, he did that. He did last year. It was last year. Okay. He did last year, but then, yeah, as soon as, you know, he officially joined us after, uh, we, you know, went through everything. I think he, yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't do anything with. He's uh, all, he's 100% on board with CSU. Right. Yeah. 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 And then at that point you can't. Yep. Yeah. Unless might, you have a I club mean, and then the mid season, you really can't even do that. Yeah. Yeah. I know he still like does stuff with some clubs here and there when he has time, but he's a, he's a working man too. He has, he's got a full-time job. So, um, but he's single, so he has, he has plenty of time to kind of work and get in the room. And, um, I mean, you could tell he really loves wrestling. I mean, it's a big part of his life. It's probably one of the only reasons that maybe he got a college degree was was the sport, you know, the opportunities that the sport gave him. So it's I think it's cool that he's decided to give back and stay involved. How old is little Josh? Little Josh is uh, he fourteen. Oh my God, is he a freshman? No, he's a uh, eighth grade. So he's eighth grade. And what are the other ones? Jason. Uh, Jake is twelve, and uh, Jason just turned eleven. Oh my God, dude! Are they all middle school? Uh, fifth, fifth, sixth, and eighth. So sixth so and eighth are in middle school, right? So, yeah, exactly. Yep. Yep. So uh, we'll have two in middle school next year, and one in high school. Yep, yeah, they're sprouting up. So I talk, uh, I see Wolf all the time, right? I keep bringing Wolf up. Andrew Wolf, he, you guys yeah. coached together at Kent State together. Yeah. He wrestled for uh, Coach Goldman at Indiana. Um, we talk about the youth wrestling, and I've actually filmed jo little Josh wrestling before, and th it's just so hard, man, right? Like a lot of people want to know, like, oh, you know, everybody expects it's Josh Moore's kid. He's going to be cracking skulls and feeding forearms, right? there's these high expectations on people's kids. Well, that's not how that's not reality. It's just not reality. Right. What is it like having kids and having them wrestle or having them not wrestle? And what's your attitude towards your boys if they wrestle or don't wrestle? Well, Josh wrestled for, it was four or five years. So he started when he was uh, maybe eight and he would just go to practice and go have fun. I, I don't think he, I'm not sure he wrestled any matches that first year, but then the second year he started wrestling some matches on Sunday, Firestone. Um, it was all right. I think, uh, you know, I think he was like, would win half his matches. And then I think his third year he qualified for like the, <clears throat> the Ohio youth state tournament, went down there and got crushed by a couple guys. Um, it was the next year, the year after, 
his last year of wrestling that he really started being like coming around, you know, he's, he was getting aggressive. He was hitting headlocks. He was feisty. I mean, he was, I was starting to see him kind of come around as a wrestler made it to the state term. And I think he won, he won two matches. Um, but then just decided it, it was always like, it was always tough to get him to go to the first practice and the second one and it'd get easier and easier as the year went on. And he, he had some awesome youth coaches at, at Stowe um, with Jason Kaminsky and J.R. Stewart and um, Tyler Buckwater would stop in. And so we had some awesome guys over there. I mean, so it was, it was kind of cool for me to go over there and help out a little bit when I could and hang out with those guys. And those guys would, you know, definitely helped him develop. But um, so, yeah, it was kind of just got, got tougher and tougher to, to always get to that first couple of practices. But then once he was there, he was fine. He had, you know, he, he liked working out. He, I mean, kid, kid is a lean, mean fight machine, you know? So it was, it was a good sport for him. He liked to run around. He liked to like, you know, like to fight and wrestle. So it was good for him. Um, but then last year, the last year Russell, he was in seventh grade and technically youth wrestling only goes up until sixth grade. Um, but, and the link he was in, so, he was like, yeah, I don't really want to go to practice this year or wrestle anymore. And I was like, yeah, just go to practice. Like you don't have to compete, you know? Um, but that's when kind of some of the COVID stuff happened and then the club was canceled for a few months. And so it was kind of just an easy excuse for him to call it a day, which, uh, you know, I mean, it bummed me out for sure. I wanted to, I wanted to keep him in the sport just for the sheer fact of what he would learn from it. And, um, that I thought he could be pretty good, you know, kind of wanted to see, you know, what, 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 you know, where he would go with it and how far he could take it. Um, but at the end of the day, I wasn't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to push him to, to do it if, if he didn't really want to do it. Um, and he, you know, he, he has been playing baseball and loves baseball. Um, again, he's and all my kids are, they're good kids. I mean, they're all really super smart. Um, pretty athletic, you know, I guess for the most part. So they could, they, anything they do, they can do pretty well. At a high level if they want to, it's up to them, right? Yep. Yeah. I'd, I'd kind of, I mean, I'm all about nudging them a little bit to do more because I don't think kids always understand what um, they want or, or what's, what's good for them. So I'm not against parents that kind of, you know, nudge your kids along or give them more opportunities to, go to different practices and get better. But you, yeah, I mean, you definitely see some people out there, some parents out there that, that get a little too wild with it, you know, I mean, they lose their minds. I remember seeing you at the OEC thing at Kenston. I think Josh got pinned, right? <laughs> tough. This is tough. I don't think people get how really tough it is though. Yeah. Like I got the yours is the first D one thing I've done this week with the Edinburgh rider and you guys. And I, you know, it's just how COVID is and it's just kind of sparse what I'm doing and just not what it was 10 years ago when I was, you know, covering wrestling yeah. and yeah, I'm a dad and it's just, it's calmed down, but man, your guys wrestle so hard. Edinburgh wrestles so hard. Ryder wrestles so hard. It's just D1 college wrestling is just like, it is a different sport. The Mulligan, the Cody Mulligan, uh, Ben Smith match. Great match, right? Did the, the whole it went the distance and the, the full uh, overtime, right? All the periods, all you can wrestle, right? Um, I like the two minutes. I'd rather see another two minutes on their feet. I think both of your guys might have passed out, though, because they were <laughs> wrestling hard, dude. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I just love that. I love how hard guys are wrestling. I just like they go out there and they get after it. And lucky for me, like, you know, Flow, flow Wrestling doesn't care about mid-major wrestling. I just don't care about it. Right. And they care about the big 10 network, big 10 schools, and they care about the IWA and the big 12, right. Cause that's where they can get contracts, but yeah, they, they still really care about the mid majors. And that's good for me because that's, that's my wheelhouse. That's what I enjoy. Those are my roots, right? Like I think that I would really wish there was more coverage of what you guys did. And I think there obviously was when I was, used to do it more. Right. But like, we need you guys to flourish. We need Ryder to, to be good. We need Edinburgh to be good. We need to be the Mac to have 50 qualifiers, 60 qual. You know what I mean? I'd like to see that. I know that's not always practical. I get it. 
but that's what we need. I need that. I need, I think that that's how these schools stay alive. Would you agree with me? Oh, absolutely. And, and to your point, like, you know, these big schools get a, get a ton of media attention. Um, not only from whether it's ESPN plus or the big 10 network or flow or, uh, media people around the country, wrestling people, they, they always want to talk about the big, uh, big schools and the, you know, the, the highly ranked wrestlers, but it's the, the mid-major schools and the, and the guys like you talked about the kids that are ranked from 25 to 35 to 40 that need that extra, uh, media attention. And I think that's where you do an amazing job. You know, you step in and you give these guys, the respect and you give these guys the notice that they deserve that nobody else gives them, you know, which is cool. I mean, and, and obviously, you know, I mean, you, people tell you all the time that they, you know, appreciate your work. And, um, but I mean, you're, you're doing these guys, you know, justice. I mean, you're, you're helping them get noticed by whoever does the rankings for intermat and flow and the open mat and the, and the coaches rankings. I mean, these guys, if they don't, if they don't get a little bit of hype that, that you give them, um, and, and there's other people that do similar stuff, not as good as you said, but similar stuff, but, um, it, it's important for these guys to get that. Um, and, and it's cool. I mean, it gives them, gives them that extra motivation. They love watching their matches and <laughs> they, they love hearing how you commentate and what you say about it as well. You know, I mean, there's, there's, there's good wrestling, Zeb. There's good wrestling, but there's good commentating as well. You Listen. Know? And, and the, you're the man at that. You're I need the, the rice guy. I need the rice guy jacked directly in my central nervous system. He's oh, yeah. a mutant. Yeah, I wish great. he understood match management a little bit. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> he's so entertaining. We're, we're Him and that Oliver guy yeah. wrestle really hard. Yeah. Like, did. that could be a match championship final easily. Easily. You never know. No, never know. I, I, hold on. Once again, don't feel like I'm out over my skis, even remotely. I think the OU kid's really tough at 74. Oh, yeah. Right? I like that. Uh, I like that that uh, Ryder guy's tough at 74. Mm-hmm. Right? Obviously, Central Michigan's got a guy at 74. I mean, it's just they always got good guys. They wrestle in all the positions. They're tough. But the Mac, let's just talk about the Mac, right? Like, once again, don't feel like I'm out over my skis at all that you guys can't win the MAC. I think you can win the MAC. I think Cleveland State can win the MAC. I think Central Michigan can go in the MAC. I think Buffalo can win the MAC. I think Ohio U can win the MAC. I think a healthy rider is probably there and in the conversation to win the MAC, right? I thought Northern had, would have, you know, a better team, but Northern seems to have gotten hit by maybe an injury bug, right? Northern Illinois. And – Dude, it's just so tough. It's just so tough. And, you know, Matt Hill, he's obviously getting hit with the, the transfer portal. And, dude, it's a mess right now. It's a total mess right now. Like, it's just crazy. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a lot of parity at that league championship. Am I out over my skis? Can you win? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think, um, well, there's so many more variables now, you know, before it was just, hey, whoever. Mizzou. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, well, they're with them being out, that helps. But, uh, you know, before it was more of who wrestled the best, who could train their guys to peak at the championships. Now it's like who can, A, keep their guys healthy with everything that's going on. And, you know, for example, we've had two periods, one in November, a 10-day pause, and then 10 days in December where we couldn't even come in contact with our guys. So now you, and you have, and, you're, and you were two and zero oh the other day in duels. You lost a tough one to Navy the next day. They competed hard, right? Think about that. You're and you're still right there. You're well, still right there. That's amazing. Two pauses, uh, so you can yeah. touch your guys for two weeks essentially. Yeah, almost. I mean, I'd say almost more three. Like three, almost three. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But I mean, that's and and but Ryder is dealing with that, and everybody's dealing with it. But it's a matter of who's gonna. <laughs> who's going to deal with it the, the, the right way and be able to still train their guys and get them to still peak at the end of the year. Uh, but, you know, if you talk to, you know, Clint, he thinks some of the, some injuries that happen 
are because of the pauses and not being able, able to train and lift and, and uh, prepare these guys properly, which I totally agree. I mean, some injuries happen just freakishly and it, it just would happen anyway, but it's, uh, it's more of who can, it, I mean, I hate to say it's a game, but it's like, who can, who can get to the end of the game and still have all their players left in. Um, a battle then, of attrition is what we call that, yeah. Josh. Yeah. It's a battle of attrition. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. dude. It's crazy. Yeah. Clint's not wrong. Clint, I, I mean, Clint is a brilliant mind when it comes to the sport of wrestling. Clint Muster's one of those guys when I, I'm speaking to him, it's like talking to Ross Thatcher. I'm like, I think this guy bumped his head today and, and forgot more about wrestling. Than <laughs> I'm like, these dudes are really smart. Like, I got yeah. a ton of respect for those guys. Ross, that, another Penn State guy, I didn't, even, didn't yeah. even think about it. Yeah. But Ross is really like a, a very brilliant analytical mind for the sport of wrestling. And he also understands the very simple things about it. And him and Clint were teammates. So that kind of makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. So, um, well, decade, yeah, the, as far as the math goes, I mean, you're right on. I mean, it's going to, you know, I mean, it's going to come down to, I mean, I mean, really, who can get the most guys into the finals? I mean, that's where you score the points. Yeah. As far as the points go, I think it what is it, 16 for first place, and then it drops to 12, and then like 10, 9, 8, or something. So, yeah, I mean, you got, you, I mean, I think the winning team will have, you know, at least four guys in the finals. You probably had the biggest upset of the tournament last year. Was it Ben Smith knocked off uh, Greg Bolsack, right? Yeah, Bolsack. Yeah. Yeah. He beat, he, and now guys at Rutgers had Gabe Dean on the ropes. That guy's yeah. right there, right? He was at Clarion. Now he's at Rutgers. I mean, you guys beat that guy. You punch your ticket to the NCAA tournament. You're in the finals, right? Yeah. How many finals last year? Him and Marcus? We had two finals last year. They both lost to Missouri kids. Those guys aren't back. Now you yeah. see what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think a lot of people get this. I know you get it. I know you're not a dumb I'll guy, be. but I think a lot of people are like, yeah, just Central Michigan. Yeah, just give me Central Michigan. There's yeah. more to it than that. I well, and I mean, certainly they're, you know, they're, they look like the favorites on paper, but man, who knows, you know, if they, if they can show up with all 10 guys and they can wrestle even to their seed, then I'd say they got the odds are in their favor, but we all know that that never happens. You know? Never, never it, happens. It's in I mean, Athens, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I might have to do, are you, are you a fifth, sixth, are you a Sunday championships? Friday, Saturday. That's a Friday, Saturday. Yeah, because I think I might be heading to Boone. Yeah. It's not the same weekend as the state tournament, is it, in Ohio? It shouldn't be. God, I hope not. I'm going to try to go to Boone that weekend and watch Wyatt at yeah. App State because it's in Boone. They're like the permanent host or something, I think. So I want to try, you know, I want to, you know, if I could do a Friday night in Athens, and you know, it's just hard, though. You get that. I'm trying yeah. to do a lot. Um, yeah, you need, you need like a twin or something, man. I do need a twin. Man, that'd be terrible if they made another super <laughs> dumb, ugly, loud guy. <laughs> uh, hey, a decade, uh, a decade, over a decade of your life changing the direction of Kent State wrestling. You, I feel like, were, were, the, were the, the attitude. You were the, you were the swagger. You, know, you guys got an NCAA champ while you were there. You got multiple-time All-Americans. You, know, you guys changed the whole trajectory of the program, you and Jim. Now you and Jim are uh, – you're probably frenemies then. Now you're just pure enemies. How good does it feel when you go down there and you're able to kick Kent's butt? I mean, it, it feels good. I mean, I think it feels good to, to, to beat anybody. But uh, with Kent, uh, you know, I think, I think the biggest thing that I think about is the gap that we kind of closed on those guys – in the last couple of years, you know, I, you know, you look at the history of Cleveland state versus Kent state. And I remember wrestling, you know, Cleveland state a lot when I was at Kent and it was, they, did they beat, maybe they beat us one time. I don't even know. Like, but for years we were just, it wasn't even close. You know, it was like, well, we're wrestling Cleveland state. This should be pretty easy. You know, not never, never too worried about them. You know, eight matches then, to two, nine matches to one, most of right. the ones you're talking about. So I guess I, I look at that now, and for us to be even in the same sentence with them and be competing with them um, just shows the direction that we're headed. 
you know, and, and I've been headed there. I mean, I think um, the one year, actually, my first year as the head coach, uh, they end up, it came down to heavyweight and our heavyweight got pinned and that lost us the duel. But that was, it was a super exciting, I think we had two or three pins. They had two or three pins. So it was, it was a little bit of a wild match. Did I call um, it? Did I have, I think I did. He might have. Yeah. It was, I normally try and do that in the OU one. Yeah. Oh yeah. But it, I mean, but it was an exciting duel, but for us to be in that match, it was like, okay, Hey, we're making some gains. And then obviously the next year is when we uh, knocked them off at Kent, you know, that's when Jimmy might have may or may not have walked awful. in the middle of the mat, got Matt uh, loss, loss of Matt control team point. If they tie you, they beat you on criteria. So people were saying, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I could. I mean, all, all as I saw was it's. The oh score. wait, wait. Who won? Who won? Where? Who won the duel? I think Cleveland we, State oh, won. We, the duel. Yeah, we did. We did. Cleveland yeah. State won the duel. It, it was again. It was. It was one on criteria. Who yeah. won the duel? It was an exciting match, though. It like, was because that was the match where Patrick. Yes. Took yeah. Rooney down. And that like crazy last second, I think he like tossed him to his back, but only he only got two. Yeah. Crazy. Well, and then one of the last matches, our guy Riley Smucker, who is a beast now, but um, you know, back he was I think it was just a freshman then. He was definitely the better wrestler, but he got caught in a couple of this kid's funky positions and almost got pinned. Um, so that was an exciting match. Heavyweight wins. Kelby had their guy pinned and that's when time ran up and that's when Jimmy ran on the mat. Uh, that was an exciting match. So, I mean, I, I, I just think there's always exciting matches, you know, between the, the, at least the last three years. Um, and you can never just like talk about these upsets. You can never really predict, you know, who's going to win. There's um, a lot of matches could go either way. Um, so it's a cool match for anybody that can get to it and just, uh, a lot of Northeast Ohio kids, a lot of local kids. Um, so it's, it's just a cool, you know, cool match, but it's good to, you know, it's, it's good to be in that match and, and be competitive, but also, you know, it, it's icing on the cake when you can walk out of there, walk out of, you know, walk out of there with a victory. Um, and it's a battle for recruiting. It's a battle for just about everything. You Pride, know. Northeast Ohio. I should do yep. the rivalry trophy. I made that that rivalry trophy, the grudge match. I uh, yeah. Scott Blank made that yeah, at Riverside good. where I teach, and um, you know Joel kind of got in my ear. But we should start one for that. I think that would be good. I think it's healthy for the rivalry, and oh yeah, I think we're gonna look into it definitely. Um, hey, we're at the hour. Do you got a little more, any bit more? Just a yeah, I got a few minutes. You know, smidge more for me. Yeah, I know that. Time, yeah. I pushed you off pretty bad tonight. I put. I kept pushing. I kept pushing. I kept pushing. I was listen. I was uh, watching the uh, App State Gardner Webb match, and do you know the history of the Perines and the Millers? Do you know the history? You don't. I can't say I do. Yeah, about about to hear it though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did uh, well, did they, you like it or not? Did, did I mean? I'm assuming. The, the old man prime wrestled someone in your family. He wrestled Ferd in the state finals. Did he really? All right. Yeah, and he, and he crunched Ferd in the oh. first period to his back, 5-0. And then Ferd came back, kind of motored him, and I think kind of Ferd beat him on like a oh. maybe an iffy stall call. Yeah. He motored him, came back, and, and like a nah, eh, stall call. But uh, and he knocked off Paul Perrine, who was at uh, Garfield Heights Trinity. Okay. And uh, he was a placer at Ferd's weight the year before as well. First off, his kids are the dudes are freaks. The seventy four pounders a freak. Yeah. Uh, right. Anthony, the guy that um, uh, Wyatt wrestled tonight, was a state champ. He pinned Cody Howard in the state finals. So he's a oh, he's yeah. a legit guy. He's a stud. I think yeah. he's been third in the SoCon at heavyweight. Now he's dropped down to 97. And it looked like he cut a lot of weight tonight because just how his performance was. Well, he, but he, he definitely better at 97. I mean, I don't think he's a heavyweight. No, he's because he's, he's they're short. He's like him and his dad are short guys. First off, Paul Prine's a super nice guy. 
like super oh, yeah. nice guy like him. He coaches yeah. with uh, Walters at uh, Nordonia. So they're good people, man. Yeah. But they, yeah, like it's crazy because, you know, Ferd wrestled him. And I thought, I'm going to be honest with you, I thought Brian was going to smash Wyatt tonight. Thought he'd beat him, you know, eight to two, something like that. Because you know he's a well, fifth Brian's year. Well, probably like a fifth year senior. He's too. a fifth year senior, and you know Wyatt's a freshman trying to figure it out. And Wyatt's not bad. He's fair. but like, I don't think Wyatt's at you know Ben Smith's level. You know, I think he wrestles a guy like Cody Mulligan, and he's like, oh my god, this guy's strong. He's a stifling. You know what I mean? Like, he's just not there yet, right? He's a true freshman, but but they wrestled the state finals, and I thought that they were going to even it up tonight, knock off old Wyatt, but. Nah. Wyatt got in a, they got in a minute scramble and that was what kind of did it for Wyatt because he's he uh kind of gets going there a little bit but you know hey I, I, I that was why I kept pushing you off tonight I want to apologize no nah, it's not uh, good I felt I'm, bad man um just watching uh some Ozark oh is it, is it do they got new ones yeah oh is it season four yep season oh four. I've been waiting for a couple of years for that everybody has <laughs> Dude, was it Jason Bateman yeah yeah. Oh, dude, that is an amazing show. Yeah. Oh, darling, remember the remember the husband and wife, and then she she poisoned the husband and killed him. Oh yeah, remember that? It's some, yeah, it's some crazy stuff. Yeah, it's nuts. Um, hey, I didn't ask you. Do the other two boys wrestle? No, they don't. They don't. Uh, they're baseballers. We 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 became like baseball family. Um, There's but they all play. There's nothing wrong with that. No. It's cool. I mean, it's, it mixes it up a little bit. We get, you know, we're outside and we love it. My wife loves it. You know, all of our, I'd say most of our friends or at least half our friends are from the baseball complex and okay. they have kids that play in our team. So it's all like, you know, with sports, it's all, you know, same thing with wrestling. You hang out with wrestling people. If your kids wrestle, if you they play baseball, hang out with baseball people. But, um, they're all good people, but yeah, they, uh, my, my youngest is what, so actually Josh, when he was 11, his team won the district and went to the state tournament for baseball. Um, two years ago. And then when the 12, when he was 12, they had a pretty good team, but, uh, it got canceled with COVID. But then Jason this year, Jason's team, my youngest one, he was in the 10 U all-star little league team and his team won. They made it to the state tournament. So it was pretty cool. And they both played some of the same positions. And um, they're actually pretty similar. I'm hoping uh, Jason's – Josh was short too, but now Josh is like almost as tall as me. Oh, wow. So I'm hoping they all kind of sprout up. You know, we don't want we don't want all short kids. Gotta <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. It's, gotta grow it's up crazy that you're a, you're a baseball dad now. Uh, and – you're just happy that your kids are good kids or smart kids or healthy kids. I think so many of these people, like these wrestling people get insane that their kids don't want to wrestle. I can tell you that my son Ferd was like, I don't dad, I don't want to wrestle today. Or I don't want to do something one day. Like when we first got there and right before we paid, <laughs> I was like, dude, he like gave me the greatest out ever. He was like, I, I don't want to warm up. I don't want to wrestle today. And I was like, you don't want to wrestle. I was like, you don't want to wrestle this year. He's like, no, I don't want to wrestle this year, Dad. I was like, dude, get your stuff. Get your stuff. Go get your shoes. We're going to yeah. put your shoes on. We're, we're going to go. We don't need to be here. Yeah. We don't need to be here. I've spent plenty of times in wrestling rooms and gyms. I've had my guts kicked out. Look <laughs> at me. I'm all beat up. My body hurts. I don't do this for me, dude. Yeah. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't, yeah. I'm all I can go do more podcasts. I can – go play baseball with you. I'll go beat you up at home. I don't need to be in this wrestling room. And I think that you're probably like a similar feeling like, dude, guys don't do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like love and hate, you know, it's like you'd love to see him do it, but you know, you also hate to, <laughs> you hate to see him go hate it. You hate it. You hate it. You hate to see him things. Yeah. Which which isn't the best way to think about it because, you know, think of all the, the times you didn't want to go to wrestling and you didn't want to do things, but you did it anyway and you benefited from it. You know, all the things you learned and the hard work and I mean a kid. I mean nowadays, you tell me if I'm wrong, but it's like, kids are missing that. Kids are missing that nowadays. You know, it's like they're, 
Well, then they got, and then they got a year and a half off. Well, yeah. (laughs) yeah. What do you think that did to everything? Now they're missing, missing uh, the grades and missing the study skills and, yeah, we'll see. What we'll has see it done that. to your team? Has it done? Have your kids persevered through it? I mean, you got Division One college athletes, right? You'd expect them to be next level people, right? That's the whole expectation. That's who you're recruited. But are your kids, are your student athletes at Cleveland State University, are they, have they persevered through it? Because I can tell you this my family's got a wrestling room. My nephew wrestled every day with Tiffin wrestlers, mm-hmm. national champ guys that were NCAA qualifiers, guys that led the country in pins for two years in a row. And Wyatt Miller got better. He got better. He thrived because we have a wrestling room. We have private facilities. We could do everything ourselves. Not everybody has that situation. Very few people have that situation. So I saw that out of my family. I saw some other families that are very close to my families. It was the opposite. It was the opposite effect. How are your, your people holding up? I mean, our people are holding up good. I mean, I think I think they've done an amazing job through all this, you know. And and it's it's tough to see them not have that experience that they should be having. But I guess part of it, they don't. Some of the some of the kids really still haven't had the full college wrestling experience. So those guys really don't know any better. Um, but some of the kids that we're in college a few years and then are dealing with that, this now, and then hopefully we'll have a couple more years, years left. But I think they're just kind of taking it with, with strides. I mean, they're, you know, it's like anything else. You, you can't really, they can't really change anything that's going on. Um, obviously we're there to tell them, Hey, keep plugging away, keep plugging away, stay positive. Good things will still happen, but it's in our mind. It, it sucks to see them go through, um, this type of stuff. And then, and then there's, you know, probably some kids that are cool with it, you know, like, ah, it's all right. I don't have to uh, get 10 days off or, Hey, I don't have to make weight uh, 16 times. It's only eight. Um, But like anything else, like you were talking about, I mean, if, if you want to, if you wanted to come out of that first six months on top, you, you found a way, you found a way to get to a room. You found a way to get better. You found a way to keep, getting stronger and putting yourself in the right type of situations. <clears throat> if you didn't care and wasn't that important to you, 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 did, you took that six months and you, you hung out, you know, it um, fell by the wayside a little bit. Yeah. Or if you just didn't have the right people around you to, to push you, you know, if you, if your parents or coaches or whoever didn't, you know, didn't give you those opportunities and, and nudge you along, um, you know, that that, that sucks, but. Um, I think our, I mean, our guys handle it are well. I mean, as far as their grades, um, I think it almost like the last year worked, worked out pretty good because we didn't even, I mean, probably most colleges, you didn't really have to worry about like the general college stuff happening because, well, a lot of classes were online. There was a lot of policies put in place about hanging out with groups of people, about going out to restaurants. <laughs> So, I mean, they, they lost a lot of those experiences, but it made our job like slightly easier to know that these kids really didn't, couldn't do that type of stuff in that, a way. That word's called mitigation, if you're wondering. Right. Mitigation. Yeah. So, listen, let's talk about somebody who thrived. Let's talk about somebody who thrived during the pandemic. Yeah. And uh, listen. They don't. They don't want that. They don't want. Oh, hey, we need. Let's 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 dial up a pandemic. We need to thrive. What's it like having <laughs> alum like Guy Seiko? What's it like having a guy like that who's just got this like <laughs> savage work ethic and is just finds a way to get stuff done? I mean, this guy had a wrestling room built. He had a full two mat wrestling room built. You know, he won't miss nothing. His his athletes, his kids weren't missing anything, right? And then obviously their business grew because, you know, they're, they're a soap company and people need to yep. wash their hands. Right. Yep. What's it like having him guy yeah. Seiko? Oh, guy, guy's the man, um, guy's the man. And of course we definitely took advantage of that wrestling room he put in place. So it couldn't have happened at a better time. Really. I mean, he, he I don't know. He maybe was up and running for maybe 
a year, six months out at that new facility when all this hit and, you know, when you can't get in your wrestling room and kids are looking for places to go, um, boom, you know, right there. He, ha he has an awesome wrestling room, an awesome one. It's incredible. And it's, it's clean. <laughs> it's clean, you know, too. Hey, defense, so defense clean. Of wrestling room, you're probably not getting any funk there. Uh, you would have you to by choice, not should shower. You'd have to do yeah. that to yourself, I think. You'd have to, like, go lay it, like, roll in the mud in a pigsty or something. Like, it is pristine. It is, like, the nicest oh, yeah. facility, man. And he's yeah. just an awesome guy. And he was an NCAA qualifier for Cleveland State. Yep. And he was in the horrible bracket. Dude, you know who's in John Smith's bracket? The guy who beat him had John Smith next round. Did oh, you yeah. know that? And it was Fowley, man. <laughs> well, uh, I mean oh. – Pretty sure guy was was he did he never place in the state tournament? Never placed in the state, the tournament. state qualifier. So, you know, still still really learning. Yeah, like a lot of the history of Cleveland State and their alums, and just like you know, tons of stories that that come around. But um, you know, that was what he talking to him a little bit about, like him and the relationship with Coach Bonacci and how you know Bonacci. I think he said when Bonacci recruited him, he recruited like five or six guys from like the same weight class to the team and he said they had a bunch of guys like i don't know was it 40 or 50 guys on the team but i mean he had to he had like five or six guys from the same state tournament bracket that he wrestled that <laughs> came to cleveland state you know and i think he he actually was, was maybe the starter he was the yeah guy. he ended up he ended up being one of the better ones you know and and from where he came from uh wellington high school i believe in wellington, in wellington yeah a duke yeah, so, being a being a state qualifier and then make it into the national tournament. I mean that. I mean, I'm assuming he was a pretty hard worker. I mean, that's that's what I'm guessing. That's I'm, what I'm guessing that. I kind of and... get that vibe from when I go there, and it's all business, man. I think yeah. I'm to the point where they're like, oh, "Zeb showing up." Yeah. Hey, Gus, run Zeb over. Here. <laughs> I'm out of here. Run it, run it, hide. Yeah, no, they're uh, cool. They're uh, so good to me, man. Them, Charlie oh, Agazino. Yeah. Gus Seiko, yeah. I mean, they're just – they treat me. Dan, Dan the man. I mean, they just got some really good people. Leah, they're awesome. I just really yeah. appreciate them for what they've done for me. And, obviously, they do a ton for you guys at, at Cleveland State. So, yeah. he's my guy. Um, yeah, of listen, course. Listen, you know we can do this all night. I got school tomorrow. You got probably some type of early morning torture lift for your guys. Thursday, Kent State, 7 o'clock in the MAC Center. Cleveland State, Kent State, should be a barn burner. I'll make a prediction right now. I'm going to go six matches for Vikings. You know I'm a Kent State homer, but I've called way more Cleveland State matches this year than I have Kent State matches, and I'm pretty yeah. confident in your guys' abilities. I read rankings. Um, you guys are in a pretty good situation to win this duel. Um, once again, I do not want to have to eat my hat, but I may have to if they knock you off. I did tell you that several times. I am a man of my word. Um, I got Vikings six six matches four. Yeah, I mean, might be, you know, it's pretty easy to say, but I think the the winning team will have six wins. You know. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I don't think there's if we walk if a team walks out and they win eight eight out of ten, man, they wrestled extremely well. Yes. Uh, out of their minds. Yeah, but it, it it'll be fun. I mean. I, I've tried to put less pressure on wins and losses this year with everything that's going on and just more of getting our guys matches and getting them that experience and, you know, giving them that opportunity to compete. I mean, I think that's, it, it, it's easy to be stressed out about, you know, <laughs> everything that's going on, but yeah, but I tried to, I, it's not really working. I still, you know, like, especially heading into that rider and Edinburgh match and, you know, having, forfeiting a weight class it's like well you know i know they're they're going to be competitive duels and even rider i mean it was they were they were tough and i know they had some backups in and they battled us and then you know edinburgh beat up on rider and i'm thinking man edinburgh whoo they're gonna they might get us and then our guys i mean they stepped up they stepped up and battled like you said and won those close matches so won yeah i mean that, matches. Patton won an overtime match smith won an overtime match yeah Yep. It's a difference of 74. Won a great match. Dude, you know I'm a fan. You just got to know I'm a fan. 
I've been a fan of the guy for a long – you know that. Ever since I've seen him out there in a CSU singlet, he's a mutant. Rice is a mutant. Yeah. He's coming I around, wish, man. He's... I wish he knew how to manage matches. Yeah. I we're, wish he knew how to sit on, on a lead. <laughs> he's like Ian, sitting, like Ian Miller sitting on a lead. What's that? Uh, I said I, I wish he just knew how to keep scoring. Wow, I mean, yeah. That I, mean, guy gets, I mean, he can score – and it, when he fakes, I mean, people people are moving, but yeah, he's exciting. I mean, that, and that's what that's what the sport's all about, and these these matches are all about, man. Sending guys out there and letting them do their thing, letting them learn, letting them get nice and tired, and figuring out who's going to keep fighting. And uh, I expect the same on Thursday. I mean, I think it's going to be a fun duel overall. And uh, I, I, you know, I I like my guys. I mean, I. I like what they're showing me this year. Um, like their perseverance through all this, all this craziness. And so I know, I know they'll come compete. Hopefully Kent's ready and we have a good time down there and you're going to be sitting right in the middle of us up. Yeah. Wherever I'm allowed, wherever I can party the most, you know? Yeah. I got you. All right. You all right got Zoe. anything else for me? No, nah, that's it, man. I appreciate it. And great job this weekend covering those duels and always, always make it happen for us. we got to, Got to get the schedule out early next year. And, and any other home up. ones left for you guys? We have OU on the fifth. Is it? Is it? Uh, would they come up in Russell Kent? Yeah, yeah. They is it Russell the fourth, Kent. fifth thing. Is it the fourth and the fifth of February? Yeah, they Russell Kent Friday and then come up to us on Saturday. So, well, I might have to just make it to that. I'm a big listen. I'm a big Sal Perine fan. Like, like literally, Sal Perine yeah. versus yeah. Rice. Jacket directly into my central nervous system. Oh yeah, but and listen, Perrine could win the Mac as a freshman. Oh yeah, I'm he's a kinda, freak. I was kind of bummed out we didn't get him. I remember oh. I, I, we recruited him. I talked it's to him a tough. few times, and nobody. It was weird. Nobody was recruiting him heavily there. I mean, I know OU was talking to him. Uh, then he had the weekend. He had a weekend where he beat Hibner. He beat he beat yeah. Jake Evans. He beat Brosky dude from Dublin. Uh, Kaufman. He beat all these really good guys, and then boom, someone scooped him up. <clears throat> Well, I mean, we he they kind of had that connection to Ohio, U, yeah. So, with Walter. good for him, man. It's it's yeah. cool to see those I'm North a fan. Ohio kids. I mean, especially as a freshman. Yeah, um, I'm a fan so of him. Sanchez is a Genoa kid. I like Sanchez. Yeah, Obviously, Gio well. Savado. I like him. And I, you know, so I know a lot of those guys. Those are like if you were just at my three closest teams are probably, obviously, um, in the MAC. You know, area teams would be OU, you guys, and Kent State. And then obviously App State, yeah. I'm just a huge fan of anyway because both my nephews. But those are probably my four. Like, if I could go cover those teams all the time, I would. But the App State ones. Who's your favorite guy that Russell's a Kent right now? I'm, I'm like a Ferry. I like Ferry. I'm a, I'm a, oh, 149, Kamara versus Robinson. Kamara knocked him off last year. It's a rematch. Kamara made the NCAA tournament. Kamara's a PA guy. Kamara is a former tenant of mine. I like him and McCracken. Those guys used to rent for me. I like those guys. They're good guys. Yeah, they're out there. Good. Yeah. Dudes. Uh, Mungia. Mungia is really yeah, fun. I thought, to watch. Yeah, I thought that'd be your favorite. Mungia, yeah. yeah. Cause Mungia, you don't know if he's going to like tie the other, yeah, but like Patton's almost like too solid for a lot of that rolling around, but Mungia is probably going to get a, w a big win over somebody this year. That he's not supposed to beat Cause he's just so dangerous and he competes hard. Yeah. yeah he's He's exciting. Well, I was talking yeah. to Patton about that match today. <laughs> Patton stifled, you know, obviously super explosive. Gary, Gary's a freak from Edinburgh. He's a yeah. Perrysburg. He's by he's Scotty Burnett's guy. That guy's a mutant that he stifled and beaten over time. So Patton and Patton's good size for the weight. He's tall. He's, he wrestles hard. So I like Patton too. You know, I mean, so when you get, you know, like, you listen, I got to go to bed. So stop getting me talking about this stuff. Cause I get fired up. Okay. Fired up, Dub. All right. All right. Well, uh, appreciate it. We'll see you on Thursday. Yes. Hey, Josh, do me a huge favor. Go out and check W. Go to the World Wide Web. Check out www.barbarianapparel.com. Josh Moore, thank you for the time on the Barbarian. I'll stick around here for a little bit.